Hi guys, what's up? Come on, come on. Can you do the intro? <laughs> what's up guys? Today we're gonna be doing a QA. and a What's up you guys? Quite, They're so le creepy. Le lead it in. Oh, you want me to do it? What's yeah. up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna be doing a Q&A. Q&A, we're gonna be answering your questions. Are you, are you doing it with me? <laughs> no, I was kind of teasing, but I could do it. You wanna answer one question with me? All right, should I do the intro for you? Yeah. What's up guys, it's Margo here. Hope you guys, week has just been so good so far. And today we're gonna be doing a Q&A. Well, when I say we, um, we're now confused who I am. See, <laughs> Caroline said you should make Xan do a Q&A. That'd be so fun, LOL. I'm, I'll do a Q&A with you. Okay, let's start it. This is fun. Wait, how about you can do my makeup as we're doing this? Cause I was no, gonna do my makeup. no, you don't push it. <laughs> I'm gonna be doing my makeup as we're doing this. Just something light, just so I don't have a bare face. And we'll just let Zan take the stage. Oh, the reason I'm doing this is because I feel like I haven't talked to you guys and just hung out in a, in a second. I've been doing lots of vlogs. We were just in Miami. And yeah, I've just been out here living life. I feel like a catch up is needed with my good friends. All right, I got a good question here. If Santori proposed to you right now, <laughs> what would you say? <laughs> is this how you're gonna do this, it? This is my official proposal. <laughs> how did Zan shoot his shot? Um, you have to answer the questions you can't. <laughs> How did Jan shoot his shot? Listen to the podcast working title and you'll find out all of the info about how I did or did not shoot my shot. It was actually more Margo than me. And the so. episode is called Don't Go To Bed Angry. Check, Check it out. out. <laughs> what do you love most about your boyfriend? From <laughs> Logan These McDonald's. questions that you're picking out. <laughs> Where's your favorite place in the United States that you've traveled to? I would say it is between, I had a really great time with Margo in Niagara Falls. Which is just absolutely beautiful. It's not a beautiful like okay, I'll go again. It's a great question. I would have to say my favorite place that I've traveled to would probably be Seattle. I thought it was an absolutely incredible city. I also kind of kind of thought it was in a way pretty similar to the UK. And I don't really know why I thought that, but it kind of just of all the US cities that I traveled to, I think that had kind of UK vibes. Because um, it was rainy. <laughs> probably. <laughs> So Seattle that. is a beautiful city though. I also, you know, I absolutely love New York State where, where you know, spend a lot of time there. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Martha's Vineyard. Absolutely love Martha's Vineyard. And then on my list, Arizona. Me and too. Montana. Are the two oh, places yeah. I really want to go to. Luke, invite us to your house. Thoughts about hookup culture, especially in your 20s? Curious to hear your I, thoughts. I think, you know, as long as it's. Um, you know, I think everyone's it, different strokes for different folks. You know, if yeah. if that's what you want to do and that you're happy and comfortable doing that, then I say do you and go ahead and make it happen. I think as long whatever situation you're in, romantically, sexually, platonically, whatever, I think as long as you know your intentions when you're going into it, before you're going into it, as it's happening, and you're comfortable with that, and you kind of know your values and what you want then do whatever makes you happy i know some people that love hookup culture and they meet a lot of people and they learn a lot about themselves and it's great for them and i know people who just don't really care for that and that's just not their vibe so i think it, it's totally different for different people my boyfriend and i are starting overseas long distance in september any tips that you've learned i love this question i can answer that Go for it. Um, I guess I think you kind of mentioned it on the podcast we did, but I think communication it goes, obviously goes without saying when it's like long distance, but I think keeping each other in the loop, yeah. I think it really helped Margot and I when we had a, almost like a kind of set time to talk each evening because it was something to look forward to and it was like you knew you had each other's like undivided attention. And for me that was kind of easy because I was up until like three o'clock in the morning, so it wasn't really like anything else was going on. And I look back now and like I really treasure that, like as much as I would want to do it again, and like I, I wish you the best of luck with it. Um, 
it's it, I think you learn so much about each other just from having that constant communication far more than I think a lot of couples would being together because you're distracted by other things so yeah I think communication is really great and yeah finding a good time to, to talk each day yeah I think the fact that you only have like verbal communication or however you choose to communicate whether that's like texting FaceTime Snapchat a combination of all three whatever like you don't I mean, I feel like that's something that kind of comes naturally. You can try out different things. One, being really open about it. So, like, if you're not really getting what you need out of just texting someone or you feel like you want to FaceTime more throughout the day, like, just having that open communication, I think, helped us. And also, you just get to know somebody on such a deep level when all you have is communication and what you have to say and share about your day and it also it made me think about my days at the end of the day which you don't normally do i feel like you just like go to bed and that's that but to be able to recall everything that you were doing like it was really nice to share that with you but it's also nice to like look back at your day and be like what did i do today what how do i want to take that into tomorrow and it was like especially hard because we were both in like full covid lockdown yeah so it, it, <laughs> it could be like, like i, I brush my teeth and like kicked a football in the garden yeah and but it was still just really good to almost feel like you were there with that person. Yeah. Ooh, this is a really interesting question. What or who defines you? I think it's different for everyone. Yeah. And, um, you know, for me, I think it'd be the people that I surround myself with, especially uh, my mum and my dad. You know, I, um, you, you kind of, I think, either nature or nurture, I think a lot of who I am is because of them and their, the way they raised me and the lessons they've applied on me um, but I've met other people that you know it, just as much as it might be their parents or their siblings it's also like an, an author that they really loved and yeah. the lessons that they provided through like their literature or um, maybe it's like a crazy uncle that's done all these crazy things that's inspired you to then go out and explore the world differently I think I think yeah. it ultimately always ties down to a family member or like a, a close friend i agree with that i think i love the quote that you are the person you are the combination of the five people you surround yourself with or it's something like that and i think it's so true and just being very conscious of the people that you're surrounding yourself with where you're getting your information from how you communicate with those people you're kind of going to just be a mix of all of those people so i would say that's who defines me but you define yourself also you decide how you want to show up every day and present yourself and think about yourself and i'll wake up and have days where i'm just like really upset with myself and angry and that is just not good and it can affect people around me and i think just being able to step back and you know think about all the things that you have accomplished or everything that you want to in the future and also just being really present i just started um the power of now by eckhart tolle and it's really interesting so far. I will give you guys a full rundown once I finish reading it, but I feel like I've already learned so much just from, you know, the first couple chapters. It's pretty interesting. And sometimes you just gotta look in the mirror in the morning and say, let's get after it. Who's let's your daddy? <laughs> Who's your daddy, baby? Let's go. Tips for Instagram marketing. That's a great question. I was talking about that with JC today. JC, what? do you wanna come in my video for a second? Do you want to come in a video? Sure. This is so cute. Hi, JC. Hi, I don't match your aesthetics. That's fine. <laughs> Let me put this mirror down. Yeah, you do, oh, baby. No, that's, that's insane. Yeah, it's Margot Gate. Let me try some. <laughs> okay. Question that I wanted to call you in for yeah. is tips for Instagram marketing. Which, uh -huh. like, I, I want to kind of merge it more into what we were talking about this morning because I thought it was really interesting what you were talking about with this like middle ground. We were talking about how like there's the super, if you're looking at like the two polar opposites on social yeah. media right now, it's like super aesthetic, vibey, like Pinterest goals, whatever. And then the other side is sharing like every part of your life and like just being super vulnerable and open and like raw unedited whatever and jc brought up this really interesting point that there's this middle ground that like is i i don't know i want you to elaborate on it because i thought it was really interesting well i just think that a lot of 
Okay, what I was basically saying is a lot of people on TikTok and in social media are really over that extremely edited aesthetic with everything going on in the bottom body positivity movement and with the rise of like unfiltered creators. So I was like, damn, like I don't know how comfortable I feel sharing like everything in my life, but if I'm over editing things, I just don't think there's like that entertainment value as much anymore. So I think there's like a healthy middle where you're really open and vulnerable about something that you feel either passionate about or you feel like an expert in where like, then you could be open and people can learn and that's that engaging content which is real but you don't have to share everything in your life at what point do you just stop watching that and living yeah. your life like if you're just watching somebody living their life like every second of their lives then how is that that different from you just putting down your phone right. and just living your own life so like if you still want to learn stuff from influencer and like this kind of goes back to the marketing thing because i think being an influencer content creator is being a marketer. It's like being a marketer of your own life and everything that's around you. Yeah. And granted, I also have a marketing position for a company, so I kind of see both sides of it where like you have to pick your positioning and the most important and valuable parts of either yourself or your company to share. I think it's good when either your career or your interest or your hobby or whatever revolves around anything whether like for us it's the internet and social media or if it's sports whatever it is to be really critical about it and think about like how much of this is actually real it's not worth putting so much of your feelings and emotion into something that is just completely out of your control um unpopular opinions I hate being in the grocery store and someone's just like slowly like looking at everything and then like blocking <laughs> that's you, that's you. <laughs> What? <laughs> but I feel like I, I feel like I get out of the way of people when they're trying to like like grab things like. Um, what's your favorite part about New York City? Are you giving your answer? I'm thinking. I think that there's a reason to be productive and get stuff done because there's always stuff that you're gonna want to do, and that's also why I loved London. Like we were there for three, four months doing stuff every millisecond of the day and there was still so much that we wanted to do by the time that we left and i feel the same way about new york where like i have a reason to be really productive during the day and finish my work so that i can go out and enjoy even if it's just walking around seeing new sites going to different parts of the city there's always stuff to do and i love that like i will never get sick of the city i think my favorite part about new york spe more specifically that i i guess i always say even when i was in london is every little section of new york is so different and like has completely different vibes but they're still so close to each other so yeah. it's like you could literally like walk across the whole city and like everything's different and get different vibes feels stores food culture everything so it's just extremely diverse in such a small yeah. like radius yeah. like, literally and yeah. i loved london because it was similar where there were different areas but they're more spread out so it took us like 30, 40 minutes to get yeah. to Shoreditch or like a completely different thing. Everyone in New York encourages you to like have your own identity, which is like my favorite part about it, like socially in the city is. Yeah. I think also they, you can be a different person every yeah, single day. Every day. And no Literally. one will notice. That's it. Except for like your roommate. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> That's what my stepmoms always told me. They were like, you could have, like, same thing actually goes back to the Instagram thing. Everything's related. But if you're too much of like this typecasted person, that's not cool. Like you have different pieces for different wardrobes. One day you could wake up and you want to be minimalistic. You could be maximalist. You could be all colors, monochromatic. Yeah. Like you want to wear something really tiny and like slutty. And then you want to wear something super like blazer, conservative, chic. Like it doesn't matter. They all go here and yeah. like you could do whatever you want. So yeah. and that's like encouraged to look different every day. Right. Rather than like fit a style. Yeah. I always want to dress tiny and slutty. <laughs> As someone that's only, you know, I think like I'm learning more and more about uh, New York as I kind of go, and I'm looking forward to moving here. But I think um, I love how it's like such a, it's like a city like that's catered to like every taste. The last time I was here and I was like really in the mood for a Sunday roast, I could go on Google and type in like English Sunday roast near me, and like there's like seven places that yeah. pop up, or like. If you're into like chess, I'm sure there's like a million like places where you can go and meet other people and like play chess. Of course, like, yeah. yeah. If you have like a kind of a clique or a niche that you're into, like you can find, you can find it in like the city, and I think that's really cool. Yeah. Um, 
when it's safe to do so i look forward to just meeting new people in all of these different corners that aren't just yeah. like i went to school with them or like they're my family friends whatever it's nice to you know branch out yeah it's gonna be so exciting to go to like openings again and like events like, yeah that's like i feel like such a popular thing in new york yeah like, someone's always doing some gallery opening new restaurant tasting new menu like something and then yeah. that's where you get to meet people because they're all like Oh, we were all interested in like learning about art. Yeah, so yeah. Let's go do that. Well, this was a lot of fun. Thank you guys for joining. Pleasure. Thanks, Thanks for having me. And I'll talk to you guys. I have a vlog going up on Friday, so stay tuned and subscribe. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my ass. <laughs>